Hello guys and welcome to the next episode in our blockchain plugin tutorials. In this episode we're going to start working with smart contracts and uh, not only send money but actually interact with contracts, write and read data from them directly. So for this to happen we need to create a smart contract, create interaction for writing into it and create interaction for reading from it. So let's start by creating a smart contract. For this, I'm going to be using an Ethereum IDA, which is called Remix uh, Ethereum.org. This is a very, uh, this is like a free environment to launch your smart contracts in test environment as well as live environment. If you create a new workspace or you just start uh, as a new user, you will receive few of smart contracts that are already here. A simple storage that is just storing a number, uh, a simple owner. Uh, solution which giving um, limited access to functions uh, and a modifier is owner uh, that could be sometimes useful uh, for something uh, and limiting just access to some of the functions but we're not going to use it in this uh, tutorial and then a ballot system which is a system for voting that is a bit more complicated than other smart contracts but what we're going to do we're going to make a new smart contract so we want to be in the contracts uh, folder right and we want to just click this create new file and we need to name the file uh, exactly the way that we want the contract to be named so we're going to call it color.soul that soul means that this is um, a contract in Solidity. Okay, so we're going to build a very simple contract. First of all, I am going to copy a license. Uh, this is not necessary for anything, but um, it's always a good practice to have uh, a license inside your contract. So I'm just copying this and this will be uh, GPL3, which is uh, one of the open source uh, licenses. Then we need to specify uh, what Solidity type uh, what um, version of Solidity we're going to be using. So let's do Pragma uh, Solidity and we are using functions that comes from 0 0.8.0 or newer. This is this, this uh, sign here. And now we need to specify a contract. So let's do contract from small letter. And now we call it color, exactly as the file that we created. And we just create brackets and we have a contract. Now here we're going to declaration of variables. We want to have some variables that we're going to be storing inside it. Um, and then we'll have uh, functions. So first of all, let's declare a variable. The variable that we want to have is we want to have colors that a player can mint and claim for themselves uh, and use inside the game. This in a more complex solution would be, let's say, a blueprint to a weapon with specific attachments, specific skin. It could be your character customization or something that will be a lot more complex. It could be stored inside JSON data, it could be stored within an array, it could be stored inside a structure. But I want to do something very simple. So I'm going to make a mapping and the mapping will be uh, of address, which is the owners of uh, whatever we want to use. And it's going to map to just string array container. So inside this string we can hold anything we want. We are going to hold uh, colors and now we need to name this variable. Uh, let's call it players colors. Okay, so we got this variable. Now we can make this variable public so you can read it. And if we make it public um, and if I go now and just compile with the newest compiler I can say, yes, enable optimization. Okay, so I, I am compiling this contract color. It is compiled. I can copy the ABI and bytecode of the contract, but I can even uh, launch it in one of the virtual machines that are running locally. 
So just use this one. We got 10 accounts, 100 ether each, and we can just deploy the contract. So just deploy the contract and boom, it's deployed. And we have one function that is being created automatically because we made this variable public. It created a getter function for it. And we can specify address and unfortunately uint, which is, um, which is like um, uh, index of the array. So when we are getting colors for specific player, we need to also specify which um, index we want to get. <coughs> and we don't want to get specific index, we want to get uh, all of them. So this function is not going to be useful for us, and we're not going to make this public. We're going to construct a function uh, that is doing this for us. So we're going to make a function get my colors and it doesn't have any inputs it's just me as a sender so i don't really have to do anything for it and this is getter function so this is a view uh, and this is a public function it doesn't have to be restricted in any way anyone can call it and can read con uh, it can read colors of any other player so uh, for example, the server can ask for colors of any of the users and verify if they actually have them. Returns. I want to return a string array, which is being stored in memory. So once we do that, we can open the function and inside the function, we just want to return. And we want to return this variable, so player colors and the index of the player colors is in this bracket and this is the message sender so uh, whoever is calling this is uh, will receive only his colors if we want we can uh, make it so that uh, you can check someone else's colors but this is getting your colors and we can make another function that would allow uh, like uh, like I said, a server to return colors of specific player. Here you are just returning the uh, the sender. Okay, so you know what? Let's make this function. It's not going to cost us much. All we have to do is just copy and paste that. Uh, get colors of owner. Let's call it like this. And this will have an input, and the input is address and let's call it underscore address and now we have this input and instead of message sender we're going to get uh, all colors of underscore address so this variable we specified here so this is a separate function that anyone can call and check anyone's address and this is checking only yours so this will be more convenient on your uh, player side to be called <coughs> Um, do we need anything else? Uh, yeah, we need to, of course, uh, we need function and we need to register a color uh, or add a color, whatever we want to name it. Let's call it register color or you know what, just add color and we want to add string memory and call it color and this is a public function it's not a view function so it is writable and it's not returning anything really so this is everything there's no returns and we can open the bracket already and what we want to do we we'll say player colors right uh, message sender because you can only write your own colors And we want to uh, add new record to this array. So to add new, uh, we don't do dot uh, add or anything like that. We actually use uh, a function called push. And we want to push the color that we have as an input. Okay. 
And we don't want this to allow adding colors to other users because only server or the, or the owner should be able to do that because otherwise people can just spam the list of other people. So this way, with this, you can only modify your own list, but you can do it without authority of any server. You can do it directly through the contract. Okay, let's add some, some space. Let's add some comments. So this is gets colors of message sender. And uh, this is get colors. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Make it a comment. Get colors of specific player. And this is register color only for self. And that's everything. That's the entire contract. So this is like 19 lines of code, <laughs> uh, including declarations. Okay, and yeah, let's deploy it in in local uh, deployment. It's deployed. So now I got those functions and I am this wallet address, 0xb5b3 something something and it's with C4. So let's add a color and I can add AABB uh, BB, I don't know, zero, zero. And let's add it. Okay, it was called FF, FF, zero, 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 FF. Okay, so I've added three colors. Uh, in theory, I should be able to get my colors. And I got an array, AABB00. Okay, so those are the three I wrote. So I got this array back. And now if I change to another wallet and I try to get my colors, I will get an empty string array because I don't have any colors. But if I change here, copy the address and change back to other wallet. I can see the colors of this guy and I am getting this array. So I can query any of the players and I can say, oh, that's really cool colors. I want to use this same color for myself and I'll get my colors and I have the same color that I copied from someone. So very simple, uh, very simple implementation. Now we want to deploy this contract live. So if we want to deploy live, we're going to be using uh, MetaMask. I'm already logged in. I'm not going to use Ethereum because it's too expensive. I'm going to go and use Polygon mainnet, uh, currently my favorite network. And yeah, so I am connected already. I can select injected provided MetaMask. If you were not connected, you would select this. And it would connect your wallet and ask for a signature for connection. Uh, we are sending zero value. This is the gas limit. This is the account. And we just want to deploy this contract. We want to publish the IPFS. Sure, why not? Uh, go. Mm -hmm. Okay. There is some issue with the gas limit apparently. So we go here. Edit suggested gas. Let's make it medium. Yeah, that's big difference. It's still just one cent to launch this contract. Yeah, that's a different uh, gas limit. Just save and confirm. And this should deploy. And if it deploys, I should get actually information here. It did deploy, awesome. So now we have this contract. Okay. And I could interact with it directly here if I could, but I just lost the link to it. So what I need to do is I have to go here, uh, find this transaction, view on block explorer, and I just lost connection to internet. Okay, some small issue with my internet. I'm just going by hand to Polygon scan 
copy transaction ID, just paste the transaction ID. Here we have it, we just created this contract, 0xd4a something something, we're going into it. And it's an unverified contract, so we go here and we say verify and publish. Uh, I am already logged in. Uh, single file solidity, compiler was 8.7, this one. License is uh, GPL3, this one. You can also say no license, doesn't really matter that much. Um, okay, continue. And it will ask you to provide the entire source code of this contract. So I want to go to tutorial workspace, contracts, this contract, copy the entire thing and paste it here. I will also provide this contract in the files for download. Optimization, yes, because this is what I picked here inside the settings. So yes, uh, construction argument. There was no construction script because this uh, contract didn't require any. Uh, so it's just empty. I'm not a robot. Beep boop. And there we have it, contract name, ABI, we already have it. Uh -huh. And we can go now here, scroll down, say I'm not a robot again, verify and publish. And we have just verified the contract. So now that the contract is verified, we can go here into contract and we can read. So we can call functions and we can write and we can write functions. To write functions, we need to connect our MetaMask. Uh, okay, and I am connected, I can add colors and I can call those functions. But I don't want to call functions from MetaMask. I want to call those functions and use this contract directly from my game. So I don't need this anymore. I only need this. I'm going to move it to the other screen and we're going back into Unreal Engine to finish the job.